Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the contradiction book tag, but before we go ahead and get on into the prompts, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new bookish content. I post new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, and sometimes other days throughout the week. Also, don't forget to check down in the description box below for links to all of my social medias, my buddy read Discord, and my Patreon, where you can be entered into winning book giveaways from me. This tag is really short, it's only eight questions, but it's all about contradictory opinions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. Prompt one asks, I love this genre, but I did not like this book. And for me, I'm gonna go with science fiction, and the book I'm gonna go with is Semiosis by Sue Burke. So I was super excited to read Semiosis because it's all about a world that has been colonized. So it follows multiple generations as they grow on this planet and kind of populate it. And the premise that sold me on this book was how there are these plants that are sentient and they play a huge role in the plot of this book. That's what I was led to believe but that's not what the book was about. <laughs> the actual plot had a lot to do with the native, I guess, people that lived on this planet and their interactions with the new, like, colonized part of this planet. And like, that's not what I wanted to read about. I wanted to read about these plants that thought like humans. And they were prevalent in like one part of the book towards the end. And even that was not interesting. It was completely underwhelming. And it was just one plant. It wasn't like a bunch of different plants. I was led to believe this was like a bunch of different plants. That's how they evolved on this planet, but we just got the one guy. And then I found the writing to be incredibly dry, incredibly boring. And if it hadn't been for the audiobook, I would have DNF'd. And then like, there was just a bunch of things about the characters. Like they did awful, horrible things and there was just no repercussions. Like there was this rape scene that happened that was just like, so blase like the author just wrote it as just oh she was just raped and then she got up and walked away and then nothing happened to the person that raped her it just didn't work for me prompt two is i rarely read this genre but i love this book and for me that is romance romance is a genre i do not read a lot of straight up romance books in fact i think i only have two romance book reviews on my entire channel and one of those is for the simple wild by k.a tucker this is an adult contemporary romance and it takes place in alaska and one of the things I liked about this book was how atmospheric it was. The author really took her time describing Alaska, describing the character's experiences and living in such a rural part of the country. And I thought it was really well done and it made me feel like I was there. And while I wasn't a fan of the romance, how it originated, I felt like the um, male protagonist was a bit harsh on Kala, our, our female protagonist. I didn't really agree with how judgmental he was about her. Over time, I liked how the romance uh, did develop and there was a lot of good chemistry. And then we also have a subplot in this book. It's not like a straight romance. The whole reason that Kala is in Alaska is to spend time with her ill father with whom she's been estranged for most of her life. So there's like a familiar aspect, a father-daughter relationship aspect. Um, it addresses loss and grief. So there's just a lot that goes into this book that is not just strictly a romance. Prompt three is I love this trope but I didn't like this book and for me I'm gonna have to go with forbidden romance. So I do like a good forbidden romance, a good Romeo and Juliet type story. It just adds a lot of angst and mystery and conflict to a story. Story. And the book I read that was supposed to have this is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a young adult to fantasy, and it's supposed to be a Romeo and Juliet retelling. And really, the only similarities was that these two characters came from ri rival gangs. Um, it takes place in 1920s Shanghai, China, and there was a lot of other countries, I guess, at that time trying to colonize, such as Russia, um, France, different countries. So there, it's kind of like a lot of different people from a lot of different places in Shanghai at this time. So Juliet is from a Chinese gang, and then Roma, uh, the Romeo, is from a Russian gang. And... Like, I just didn't feel any of the angst between the two characters. And I think that's because they had already had a relationship before this book started. And Julia talks about, like, their previous relationship. And I'm like, but now you just took away all of the angst of a forbidden romance. Because obviously, how forbidden can it be if they've had it before? And now there's no angst with them meeting for the first time because they've already had a relationship. So all of the aspects that would have made that romance better, she completely changed. Not for the better. 
comes for is I hate this trope, but I love this book. And I'm going to go with the Mean Girls trope. The book that has the Mean Girl trope is A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray, or this entire trilogy. This is a YA fantasy series. And at first, our main character does go off to a boarding school, and she is presented with that uh, group of girls that tries to humiliate her and is horrible to her. But as the series develops, all of the girls do become friends and our main character does learn more about these characters and why they might be acting the way that they are and what's driving their actions. And one thing that Libba Bray did really well is she didn't make their friendship and their relationship perfect by any shape of the imagination. All of these girls still have fights, still have disputes, and the girls really had to learn how to work through these conflicts. So I think even though she started out with the mean girl trope, she really, really grew that trope and changed it to make it work with the book and make it more realistic for the reader. Prompt five is I love this author, but I didn't love this book. And I'm going to be going with Naomi Novik, and that is Spinning Silver. And I was really, really highly anticipating this book because I really liked Uprooted, and I've been wanting to reread it uh, just because I remember enjoying it so much. And that's the only other book I've read of hers, but when I read Spinning Silver, I was very let down. I ended up giving it three stars. I do have a full review if you're interested in checking it out. I'll link it up there. But there's just something missing from this book that was not missing and uprooted. And for me, I think it was that I did not feel a connection with any of these characters. This is a loose Rumpelstiltskin re retelling, and we follow a handful of different characters, and I just felt like they were all the same. Like, their stories were different, but their voices were the same. The tone from each perspective was the same, and I personally felt no connection to any of their stories. Prompt six is, I originally disliked a book by this author, but I love this book by the same author. And for me, I'm gonna go with Brent Weeks. So I originally read his Night Angel trilogy, and when I was done with it, I even said to myself, I did not like that at all. <laughs> I, I really hated the finale, but just the entire series just didn't work with me. And I had already had The Black Prism, which I had bought um, and just hadn't read it yet. And I was really, really hesitant to read The Black Prism. But when I did, it took me a couple hundred pages to get into, but once I was past that mark, I was gripped by this story. I was gripped by the mystery of Gavin Guile and Days in Guile. I was gripped by the magic system and the Chromaria and all of it. And I've read all of the books in the series. It's one of my favorite fantasy series. And I was just really surprised that I could jive with this series when I actively disliked um, the Night Angel trilogy. So I plan on picking up more works by Brent Weeks once he publishes something new. Prompt seven is I love this book cover, but I didn't love this book. And I'm going to go with A Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is a YA standalone fantasy, which standalone fantasies are hard to do. And this book was so popular at one time, and it follows a magical type library and a girl that watches over these books that are imbued with like magic and they're, they come alive almost. And there was just something about this book that was extremely lacking, and it mostly came at the ending. Like, the ending was not fleshed out at all. Like, we were presented with the climax, and then I felt like the book just ended, <laughs> leaving the reader to kind of infer what happened. Like, I felt like there was no closure at all. And that really griped me because there could have been just so much more added on to the story, especially the ending and the characters and what they sacrificed. and. It just like got cut off. It's almost like the author like ran out of time and just ended the book. And that was where my main problem came in. So I do plan on reading more works by Margaret Rogerson because I really liked An Enchantment of Ravens by her. Um, this one just didn't work for me, but the cover is absolutely gorgeous. And the last prompt is, I don't like this book cover, but I really enjoyed this book. And I'm going to have to go with Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the obviously mass market paperback, and I have never liked this cover. So we have the main character, obviously, it's one of the girls. But they have the, like, colored <laughs> ribbon coming out of her mouth. And I'm pretty sure that's supposed to represent breath, which is part of the magic system. But, like... It just looks weird. I feel like there's a streamer just coming out of her mouth. Like she's one of those magic people that stuffs all of the rags down their throat and just like pulls them out. I feel like that's what she looks like. And then her hair is like stark white. And I don't know, I, I never liked this cover. And it was just actually one of the reasons that I probably 
took me so long to read it. Um, but I love the book. I love the world. I love the magic system. And I love how it contributes to Sanderson's Cosmere. I just feel like the cover art needs to be updated. Okay, you guys, that is it for the contradiction book tag. Let me know in the comments some of your answers to these questions. And I will see y'all in another video soon. Goodbye. Thank you.